Hi, thank you very much for tuning in. I'm Alex Ansrud. I'm a plastic surgeon and a cosmetic surgeon on Vancouver Island. This uh, video was designed to help you understand the process involved with treating non-melanoma skin cancers. You may be someone who has a skin lesion that is currently being worked up, diagnosed, and you're preparing for treatment. I hope that this video helps you in that process. Non-melanoma skin cancers often present as lesions or sores that bleed. They may repeatedly seem to be healing and then start to bleed again. That cycle of almost healing can lead to delayed presentation the first time you have one of these lesions. They are usually painless and people will often attribute them to a trauma or a scratch such as a shaving cut. This individual has a basal cell carcinoma starting around the base of the nose. The nose is the most common place to have a non-melanoma skin cancer. There are several types of non-melanoma skin cancers. The vast majority are basal cells or squamous cells. Basal cell cancers can damage local structures and become infected and bleed. They do not lead to death or spread to other areas of the body. On the other hand, uh, squamous cell cancers have the added potential to spread to other areas of the body. This uh, diagram here shows an example of a small basal cell cancer on the lower eyelid, which is something that we treat. Most non-melanoma skin cancers are due to cumulative radiation exposure from the sun over one's lifetime. Sun protection with a hat, suntan lotion, and sunglasses is an important way to reduce exposure to radiation. Sun protection is important throughout the year. Even on a rainy day, 70% of the radiation from the sun still comes through the clouds. This uh, lesion here is a squamous cell cancer on the lower lip. This is something that we treat in our office. To diagnose a non-melanoma skin cancer, a tissue sample is taken and examined in a laboratory using a microscope. Removing a sample is called a biopsy. Examining the sample is called pathologic review or pathology. This man had a non-melanoma skin cancer, a basal cell, on the upper portion of his ear. Some lesions can be burned using a number of different types of agents, such as liquid nitrogen or dry ice. Other lesions can be burnt with creams. Most are treated with surgery Certainly, once they achieve a certain size, the creams and the liquid nitrogen are often less effective. In some cases, radiation may be used. However, this is relatively uncommon due to the long-term side effects of radiation. This patient has a basal cell carcinoma here at the bottom of the nose, which is a very common area. They also have a squamous cell carcinoma near the tip of the nose, and unfortunately, they had radiation in the past, which has caused radiation changes throughout the top of the nose. Surgery is most often done under local anesthetic with freezing only. The skin cancer is removed and sent to pathology to confirm the diagnosis and to confirm the entire lesion is gone. The hole that is created is closed by shifting skin from different areas. This gentleman had a basal cell carcinoma of the nose. Because of the location and extent of the lesion, his reconstruction was delayed for four or five days until we could be 100% certain 
that all of the lesion was treated and removed. He had reconstruction of his nose using a piece of skin from the forehead, known as a forehead flap. This is his final result in the bottom picture. Surgery does have risks. In 5% of cases, not all the cancer is removed and another procedure is required. When the reconstruction is complex, there is a delay in a few days between the removal of the cancer and the reconstruction. This way, if further tissue needs to be removed, it can be done without disturbing the reconstruction. 50% of the time, there will be a little bit of bleeding on your pillow that night or the next morning after your surgery. In 1% of cases, there may be an infection. In 1% of case cases, patients may require surgery at nine months to improve the scarring or healing. This individual had removal of the tip of the nose due to a skin cancer. He had reconstruction of the tip of the nose, again, with a forehead flap. This is his final result. There are things that can be done to make the surgery go more smoothly. The most common problem or complication after surgery is related to bleeding or oozing. To reduce the risks of bleeding or oozing, foods and medications that cause bleeding should be stopped. Two of the most common things that increase bleeding dramatically are garlic and aspirin. Eating garlic or taking a baby aspirin within three weeks of surgery will cause the platelet cells, the cells that help with bleeding, to stop working and become dysfunctional. And that will significantly increase bleeding. Please go to the patient handout section of our website at www.dranswer.com and review the handout entitled Medications to Avoid Prior to Surgery, or you can tap the link on this page. It is also nice to arrange for a ride to and from the appointment when possible. What to expect at my visit? Paperwork and follow-up will be reviewed with the office staff. Your lesion will be reviewed by Dr. Ansarut. The reasons for surgery will be reviewed as well as the risks of surgery. If you have surgery, the area will be frozen with a local anesthetic, very similar to at the dentist's office. If you prefer to have a sedative to help you relax, make sure to have a ride home. It is always best to have a driver to take you home. Expect to be at the hospital for one to two hours. Bring a book. There is often significant periods of waiting. Many procedures may be booked in a single day. If one procedure takes longer than expected, you may have a wait time. After surgery, there are a number of things that you can do to help the healing process. Sleep with your head up for 48 hours, either by propping it up on pillows or sleeping in a lazy boy chair. Ice the area using a cloth between the ice and the skin 15 minutes on and 15 minutes off for the first 48 hours while awake. This will decrease bruising and swelling. However, there will always be some bruising and some swelling. This patient had a significant amount of bruising and swelling. He had an incision above the eyebrow to remove a skin cancer. Afterwards, he had a significant amount of swelling and bruising in the lower and in the upper eyelid areas. Bleeding often occurs in the first 40, 48 hours, usually the night of surgery and the next day. If bleeding occurs, apply firm pressure, two to five pounds of pressure, using a gauze or cloth that is clean. Do this for 20 minutes by the clock. Avoid dabbing or checking the area. Just apply the pressure as you would for a shaving cut. Then leave the area alone. To optimize 
the healing of the area and the scarring keep the area clean. Use sterile water or hydrogen peroxide to remove any scabs that come off easily. Do not pick at scabs. Place an antibiotic ointment such as fusidin or polysporin or even Vaseline ointment on the wound for the first seven days. Avoid submersion under water for four weeks. Avoid swimming pools, hot tubs, baths. However, running water can safely go over the wound. Therefore, showering is okay. To decrease the firmness of the scarring and improve the appearance of the incision, start firm massage for five minutes three times a day at the four week mark, not earlier. This lady had a basal cell skin cancer removed from her lower eyelid. This was reconstructed with a skin graft. A portion of skin was taken from the upper eyelid excess and placed over the hole created in the lower eyelid. This is early in the healing process and her incisions will improve dramatically. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you would like to see other videos, please go to our website, dransrew.com. Like us on Facebook or YouTube. And if you have further questions, just give us a call at the office, 250-597-2064. Thanks again for watching the video.